Welcome to Evolution. My name is Andre Lawrence and this is my channel about electric cars from the perspective of a first time EV owner. Winter is here, as you can tell, and a lot of people have asked me, what is it like to own and drive an electric car in the winter? What are the advantages and disadvantages? What's it like to drive in snow and ice? And how do you charge at home if you don't have a garage? And what's this for? Well, if you want to know the answers to these questions, stick around and I'll let you know in 10 seconds. At the beginning of winter last year, I made a video about charging your electric car at your home as well as on public chargers, and I went into some detail as to protecting your charge port cover when you're charging at home and you don't have a garage like I don't, and you have your charger outside. Well, fortunately, there are solutions that exist, and these companies both provide them. In this particular case, I'll be showing you the Macafish product for my son's 2015 Chevy Spark EV. Now the charge port being on the side poses different problems as to having them on the front but you still have the problem of the charge port being completely exposed and if it snows and there's ice that accumulates you may have a difficult time closing the port completely to be able to leave or even removing the pistol from your car. Now I've gone ahead and I've connected the charging station to my son's car. If you want to see how to charge your car at home and on public charging stations, I'll put a link to my video up here on the screen somewhere so that you can get the information. Now fortunately, as I mentioned, there are a couple companies that make covers to protect your charge port. Now let me show you how to install them because it's really ingenious and quite simple. Essentially, you get a cover of some robust material that has Velcro at strategic spots that allows you to connect it to the car to cover the charge port cover and protect it from snow and ice. Now this is from Mechapish. I will put a link to their website in the description below and you can see that they'll have covers for a ton of different models of electric cars. So feel free to go browse their website to see the different versions that they have. This one is for the Chevy Spark EV. Now let me show you how to install it. You just put this in line, the Velcro here, in line with the wiper. Pass the Velcro strip underneath the wiper arm, like so. And then all you do is attach the Velcro together. Come down here, make sure the charge port cover door is closed a little bit. Stick the Velcro together both top and bottom to snug up against the cable and you're done. You have Velcros on the sides of the cover both here and here and it is possible to pinch these together to tighten it up if you want to. Now in this particular case I wouldn't do it because as you can tell it's got pretty good coverage all around and there won't be any snow or ice getting in there. Now what about the next day when you're done and it's snowed? Well, it's actually quite simple to remove it. You brush the snow off the top of the cover, pull the Velcro off the bottom, pull the strip, remove it, shake it off, put it in the trunk of your car, you're ready to disconnect with a completely clean and ice-free port to disconnect and leave. I encourage you to check out the Mechapish website because they do have port covers for pretty much every electric car, or almost, as well as some other products that may be of interest to you. Not just for the Spark and Nero and Soul, but they've got them for the Kona, the Bolt, the Tesla Model 3, Model Y, you name it. They've got things for pretty much every electric car. Now you may be thinking, I've got a garage and I don't need one of these, but let me tell you that if you're out somewhere and you're charging at a friend's place or sleeping at a hotel, and you charge your car, not having one of these in an ice storm will be something you'll regret. Now something I'll be showing you very shortly is what do you do when you've got children in the winter with booster seats and they put their dirty feet all over the back of your really nice electric car seats? Well, there's a solution for that from Mechapish. When you have young children in booster seats in the back seat of your car, what that means is that their feet are generally sticking upwards and forwards into the back of your front seat. That means that the finish on the back of your seat will get dirty or scratch because their boots are never clean because they're kids. Now fortunately, Mechapish has invented a product for this. Now this one is installed. It is a vinyl cover that is cut to shape for your car 
and has included Velcro stickers for the bottom portion if you're so inclined to install them. Now, I haven't installed the Velcro in this one, but to give you an idea as to what it looks like, this is essentially it. Now, all it is is tucked in behind the seams of the plastic, nice and snug, and at the bottom, if you have the Velcro installed, it's not going anywhere. Easy to clean, nice and smooth surface, and if you ever want to take them off, well, it's just a matter of pulling it off and you're done. One of the questions that I get asked about driving an electric car is what's it like to drive an electric car in the winter? Well, from my 20 months of experience with my 2019 Kia Niro EV, I can tell you that the experience has been fantastic. The fact that this car has this giant battery low to the ground underneath it with all that extra weight makes the car very planted and do well in terms of loose snow and ice as long as you've got good winter tires. Now I'll get to the winter tire portion in a minute. Now there is one situation that I'd like to talk about that should apply to very snowy, icy conditions as well. Now this happened to me before confinement. I was on vacation with my wife. We were at a location, a store of some sort, and their drive was a uh, very steep incline completely made out of gravel. Now, as we exited the parking, we got to the incline and I started to drive up the incline and it didn't matter how hard I pressed on the accelerator, the car slowed down to the point where it came to a dead stop, regardless of whether my accelerator pedal was pushed to the floor and the car wouldn't move anymore. Now, the traction control was completely in control. I had nothing I could do. The whole thing ended up being the fact that I was in eco mode. Now I find that the control in eco mode for traction is really weird. I ended up backing down the uh, driveway, putting it in normal mode after thinking about it for a little while, and then did the same thing. It went up slowly, but this time in normal mode, even though I was losing traction, pressing the accelerator still let me accelerate and keep control over the wheels with the traction control and I was able to leave. So that means that I'm guessing that in snowy and icy conditions on a steep incline with any of these cars that have this technology, it'll be the same problem with eco mode. If you've got this problem or if you've experienced this problem and you own one of these four cars, put it in the comment section below. I'd be really curious because I think it's something poorly programmed in the Nero EV with regards to eco mode and a slope that's quite steep. So what's my overall impression though of the Kia Nero in my 20 months of ownership? Well, the car has been amazing. In terms of winter driving, this car is very planted, sticks well to the snow and ice, handles well. I've never been stuck. I've never had a problem in terms of winter driving. This thing is fantastic. With that being said, it's important to note that if you drive in winter conditions, not just on snow and ice like here right now, if it's going to be zero degrees Celsius or colder, right now it's minus 13 and freezing, it's been proven multiple times by independent studies, not just the manufacturers of the tires, as well as all sorts of reports, that driving on winter tires significantly reduces the braking distance of your car, as well as improving handling and increasing acceleration. There are tons of videos out there, you can do a little bit of Google searching for them, that show this. Now even all season tires say all season, they're definitely not appropriate for winter. Now, the tire that you're going to want to choose is going to have the mountain with a snowflake symbol in it, like right here on my tires, because those are proven to work in low temperatures and they don't freeze into hockey pucks. Now on my Kia Nero EV, I've chosen the Nokian Hakapolita R3 winter tire because they are by far one of the best you can purchase with regards to low rolling resistance and overall snow and ice handling and driving. Now I chose these at the time because this is pretty much what was listed as the best, but interestingly, Nokian seems to have a new tire that I haven't read much about that's called the Hakapolita 10 EV. So I don't have information on this right now, but I'll try and find a link and put it in the description below so that you can check it out. Now one advantage that I have driving my Kia Nero that not all EV drivers will have is the fact that I'm able to install a product called a cam wipe, which keeps my rear view camera clean whenever it gets dirty, when I activate the rear wiper, it brushes the camera clean. 
Now this is the version 1.0, which is gray and has a bigger brush. And a lot of people have asked me why mine looks like this. And the inventor, Eldar Abisovic, has also been getting questions about it. So I've decided to rectify the situation and install the latest version, the 3.0, which has a bit of a smaller brush. These are very, very soft, by the way. A lot of people are worried about scratching the lens. This will not scratch the lens. I've had this on my car, this big brush version, and I've used it on dry dirt as well as water and you name it. And the lens is not scratched. So if you have any concerns about that, don't. It's a fantastic product and does exactly what it says. Now, one thing people do ask is why this one is a bit of a different color than the wiper arm. Well, that's because this is one of the very first ones that was being used for testing purposes and also has the cam wipe logo on it. I'll be removing that right now. Just lift, pull the sides, set it aside. Then I'll take this latest version, which is the 3.0, which has a bit of a smaller brush and no logo printed on it. And I'll just reinstall that now. And there you go. Perfectly matches, very resistant. Wipes the lens clean whenever there's dirt or water on it, making your rear view camera useful in pretty much all conditions. What about the advantages and disadvantages of owning an electric car in the winter? Well, I can tell you that on a day like today where it's minus 19 degrees Celsius while I film this particular segment, I'm more than happy to have my electric car because in Montreal there is a law that says that you're not allowed to let your car idle for more than a few minutes. That means that with a gas powered car, you can turn it on and warm it up for a couple of minutes before you take off, but the chances are it's still going to be bloody cold in your car. Having my Nero EV being fully electric, I can crank it up to 24 Celsius, let it heat up for at least 15 minutes, and I'm guaranteed to get in my car and be nice and toasty warm. One of the things that I really appreciate about my electric car is that I can pre-program my car with two different schedules to be ready for a departure time seven days a week. That means that if I leave at a specific time on every day, then I can have the car ready to go warmed up, defrosted, and never have to touch anything. Now if I'm somewhere else and I'm outside of my schedule, I can use the UVO app, and I'll put that up here on the screen so you can see what it looks like, to actually start my heater and defroster and heated steering wheel remotely anytime I want. So if I'm at some friend's place and I start the heating before I leave, about 15 minutes before, my car will be ready when I leave. This has the added benefit of me never having to scrape my windows. Now on a day when it's really cold and there's an ice storm, what happens is most people are outside scraping their windows for 10-15 minutes. What I end up doing is I turn on my UVO app, set it to defrost, 25 degrees Celsius, and I'll run it for half an hour. That means when I get out, my windows are actually full of water. In a worst case scenario, I'll be brushing off some little bits of ice that are still floating around on the windows. But that's it. Now because it's so cold outside, I'm actually in the car with the heater on because my hands were starting to get numb. And I wanted to talk to you about one of the disadvantages of an electric car in the winter, or a perceived disadvantage by people who own gas cars, is how much range you lose in the winter when it's really cold. Now, this is sort of a misconception, although it's not a misconception. Yes, an electric car will take a hit in terms of range in the winter when it's cold because the battery gets cold. But there's a little caveat to that. It really depends on the electric car you own. In a modern electric car with thermal management and a battery heater, you'll lose far less range as compared to some of the first EVs that weren't designed for this. Now, in an old Leaf, you can lose up to 50% of your range in the winter when it's cold, but in my Nero, I lose approximately 25%. That means in the summer, I drive my Nero city and highway mixed driving and I get about 400 kilometers range. In the winter, I get about 300. Now, a lot of people might say, wow, you lose 100 kilometers of range. I don't drive 300 kilometers a day in my car. And if I had to drive somewhere after 300 kilometers, I'd be stopping for a gas break if I was in a gas car or a pee break or whatever. So I'll be charging up my electric car at that same time. Now, I've discussed this in that video that I mentioned earlier, and I put that link up about charging at home and on public chargers. So you get the gist of what I'm getting at. Now, another thing that people don't consider is that when you own a gas-powered car, in the winter when it's cold, you're losing a ton of gas and range at the same time as an electric car is. Now, the only reason you don't pay attention is just because 
you're used to filling it up with gas and not paying attention to anything other than the full empty gas meter. Now the reason that your gas powered car uses more fuel in the winter all has to do with fuel and air mixture ratios. What that means is there is far more oxygen per volume measured in air in the winter because it's so cold, the air is very dense, that the car has to add more fuel to get the proper ratio for combustion in the engine. So you're burning more fuel when it's cold, that means that you're using more gas in the tank, which means that you have less range in your gas powered car as well. So is it a disadvantage that an electric car loses range in the winter? Yes. But is it a massive disadvantage as compared to a gas powered car? No. If you've been on the fence about purchasing an electric car because you're worried about what it's like to own one in the winter, I can assure you that my 2019 Kia Niro EV has been the best car ownership experience that I've had since 1987. Now, is it perfect? No. I'm actually going to be making a video about things I hate about my Nero EV. Hate's kind of a big word, but there are little things that are, you know, annoying. And you'll see that in that video that comes out. Now, with that being said, there are a ton of cars, not just the Nero EV, that are fantastic that you should consider. I'll put a little list of some of the cars that are out now that I think are worth looking into as well as some of the cars that are coming out this year, it's going to be very exciting for 2021 in terms of electric cars. Now, since it has been a long time that I haven't posted a video, I wanted to say thank you very much to all of you. You've been extremely patient and supportive with your comments. And I want to say thank you to all of my new subscribers because even though I haven't posted in two months, my subscriber count has broken 6,000 and I think I'm 6,050 something now. So thank you to all of you who have subscribed. It really means a lot to me and tells me that you like my content and want me to make more. If you haven't subscribed to my channel, this subscribe button and especially the notification bell are important because I have absolutely no posting schedule whatsoever. So when you click that notification bell, you'll know when my new videos come out. Now, also because it's been a long time that I haven't posted a video, some of you are new to my channel, I will give you some links down in the description below. I've got an Evolution Instagram account, as well as an Evolution Facebook page that you can ask me questions on and see articles and other stuff that I share. And I've also got an Evolution website that has sort of a catch-all. And not only is my Evolution website a place where you can see all of my YouTube videos in chronological order right on the web page, but below that, if you don't have an Instagram account, you get to see my Instagram posts. Now, I've also created a new section on my website that lists all of the products that I've purchased for my car and reviewed in my videos. You can also click on some links to go straight to the manufacturer's website if you're interested in purchasing some of their products. Now, with that being said, I do have a Kofi account because in one of my last videos, a subscriber said that he wanted to buy me a coffee. So, this was completely new to me. I've created a Kofi account, which is linked below, and that's the symbol right here. And if you want to buy me a coffee, That'll make me really happy. I would appreciate it. And thanks to all of you who have already bought me coffee on Kofi. It's really a big deal. Thank you very much. People giving me money to do this is kind of weird to me, but thank you. The investment in all of this stuff to make this video happen is kind of expensive. So thank you very much. And as usual, thanks for watching. Welcome to Evolution. My name is Andre Lawrence, and this is my channel about electric cars from the from the I guess it's colder than I thought. Hoo, hoo, hoo. And it went into some detail about how to protect your charge port when you're charging at home without a garage like I do, and it snows and it's total crap. I'll put a link to the video that I made last year somewhere on the screen. Uh, why did I do that? That was stupid. So feel free to check out the website. So feel free to So feel free to check out the Mecca Pish website that I've linked below. They have part Man, my mouth is frozen. So feel free to check out the Mechapish website. I had <laughs> things for the Tesla Model 3 as well as for the Kona and Kia Nero. And uh, 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 mm, 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 I don't know how to speak because I'm frozen. Oi, oi, oi. As you can tell, the back of my Nero has. Of course, the battery's dead. <laughs> uh, you know what? I don't care. I'm done.